you know, Limerick, I think, have a bunch of hurlers now. It doesn't matter how they play it, really. They've just got an exceptional bunch of hurlers that came into one group. And mm. you could really set them up. I don't mean any way, but, you know, it's like my mother had trained them to win an all Ireland, and it's no disrespect <laughs> to John Kiley or, or Kinnert, but they, they're, she'd go a long way, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, and welcome to The Hurling Show. We're down to the final two uh, after an incredible weekend of hurling. Saturday maybe was one-sided, but still incredible in its own right for for the win that was produced and how it was produced. And to go over that game, uh, we have James Ryle, who's in particularly good form. How are you, James? Very good, Jeremy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, good. There's, a nice, there's, a, there's an extra inch or two in that smile. And Derek Honan, maybe not as much. Uh, your side, Derek. How are you? Hey lads, how are you getting on? I missed my chance to come in after Clare beat Wexford, but of course he summoned me as soon as Clare were beating for James to glow. Era, when I saw, sure, when I saw, when I when I saw the possibility, I said, "Era, we leave Derek off for, for, for another week." Um, what's what was going on for you, Derek, during the game? Um, aside from analysis and what teams are doing and everything else, like just as a Clare man with experience, you're good friends with a lot of these fellas. You know the capabilities. What was happening for you? I know you're up now in the GA, GPA box, so you were you were in, in, enjoying yourself up there. But what was happening for you? Looking at the first half, what, what was going on for you? Yeah, it was a tough watch, Gizzy. Being honest, like from a player point of view, a very tough watch because you know pretty quickly into the match, you realised things weren't right here. Like, um, I, are was, you thinking that's going to like? Were you kind of waiting for that to turn, or was it like was it disbelief or like? Yeah, initially I was waiting for it to turn, you know, um, but it kind of, even, you know, Kilkenny didn't take too long to stretch out the lead and any time that Clare even looked like they might get a bit of a run, you know, they'd concede a free or Kilkenny would just hit him with a score back straight away. So, you know, it was a pretty tough watch now from, from start to finish, being honest, because there was never really, you know, you never felt like, okay, we're, we're at full, we're motoring here now and, you know, we're going to get the most out of ourselves you know that's probably the most frustrating thing is when you go up to a big game like that and you know you, you just don't get a performance uh regardless of the result because you know it's very hard as a supporter to get in behind it then at all uh so yeah it, it was a it was a trying day and, and a tough watch yeah that's all that was always the i, I often sensed it from from Wexford supporters like as a supporter and but as a player as well like what you what you don't the last thing you want to ever feel coming off the field is that you've left a load of what your capabilities are in the dressing room or, or somewhere else other than on the field. And mm-hmm. yeah, I was waiting for something to kick in with Claire. And even even when they did kick, as he said, even even at the start of the second half, there was a little bit of a kick. But I think it was Billy Ryan went up and got a point at one stage. And I was thinking, oh yeah, well, that's fine. Claire can do what Claire are going to do. But Kilkenny are also are not being stopped up the other end. So you can go on your run. But it's it's uh, yeah, it just wasn't turning like... Yeah, and you'd have to give huge credit to Kilkenny for that. You know, they they didn't give chance. I think we will be up. given a load of credit to Kilkenny yeah. shortly, but yeah, for sure, that's that was yeah. they, they got the set up right because they got set up right. You know, they they played from start to finish. Uh, they allowed no space for Clare forwards, and uh, they forced the Clare backs into hitting off the ball. And you know, they realised as well that they can't let Clare you know get a bit of a run because you know the game can get away from you then. And Clare showed great to come back in the quarter final and. They just they just snuffed out any any chance of a comeback at all. Uh, you know, any time there was a bit of a resurgence like that, you know, there was a point tacked on, or they they win a free, they take their time taking it, and it was just you know they snuffed out any danger any time it did arise. Contrasting with <clears throat> with your view, James, on the game, uh, yeah, more what was what, what was what was going on for you while you were, while you were watching it was was there that similar disbelief or was was this kind of did you know this was this is what they're going to. This is what Kenny going to bring for an Ireland semi-final because that's what they always bring. Nah, look, the the scoreline was, I suppose, that was something that you, you couldn't anticipate happening. Um, mm. You know, we we're like, I think it was what sixteen, was it forty or four, fourteen points at half time, and you couldn't see a way back at that stage, and yeah. they probably flattered Kilkenny a small bit. You know, they did. even even still, I was thinking just based on what we've seen this year of Clare and what we've seen of Kilkenny, I was like still. This isn't like that's some there's some kind of resurgent or, or there's some kind of top level that Claire can hit. Like like if I was to believe everything that I've that we've heard, it's like but there's still a level that Claire can hit that Kenny probably won't be able to deal with the mat. 
I know it's 14 points and maybe in the game now they say, you know, seven or eight points isn't what seven or eight points used yeah. to be. So I was thinking maybe, but but yeah, they just... It, well, just actually when, when Derek was saying there that Kilkenny kept getting a point back and, mm. and bringing it in and it just I, I just thought of what DJ Carey always said and not that I was in the dressing room for many years with him, but he always, you know, if we're ahead in the game, he kind of had the statement that for every point we score, they have to get two to eat into the lead. Mm. And I think it's a great way of, and I, I, I've always even used it in club games and everything, if you're up a few points or whatever, you know, for every single point we get, you know, they have to get two back to, to make any. And That's I'll, what Galway kind of suffered against Limerick, wasn't it? They, they yeah. were t- you're trying to tag those points on while Limerick are getting the extra point. You've got this, like... It, like it's, it, 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 it Clare only needed a small bit more before that crowd would have really got behind them. And mm. Kenny, they snuffed out a few chances. And to make it worse in, uh, you know, a chance that a Clare would have for a score, and there was a few of them there, they were turned around and were back over the, 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 the Clare bar in within a couple of minutes. And Kenny were very economical... They miss very little. Um, Claire missed a lot, but uh, he kind of just performed very well. Yeah. The economy of their movement, the economy of Kilkenny's movement. I mean, this is something that we've seen time and time again. There's something in. I know Cody talks all the time about, and he was talking about it after the game at the weekend. He's talking about the strength of the panel, and <clears throat> he's not too tied into. 1 to 15 and some people his critics would say well it's better to have a settled at least 12 we'll say but whereas he's yeah. saying look at whoever's playing is playing and ev- ev- everyone's entitled to their chance but there's something in rejigging th- the setup that can destabilise consistency but does there there is something that he hits on when that when that lands right and invariably when you come out of the province I think and it comes into an Lawrence me final or final they do the simple things very, very well, and that produces something that's um, it's what what the word uh, synergistic. Like the, the sum of the parts are yeah. all, are all of a sudden greater, and you got that sense throughout <coughs> the game. TJ put put the just put the hurl in at the, the the very right second. Now you could be putting hurls in left, right, and center all day, and and the way lads are moving now for for hand passing and stuff is has, has, is very different what it used yeah. to be. But they were getting they were landing on the ball perfectly every time. It's like it was just it was a, a master class in simplicity that became a master class of performance, and it's. Um, what? Yeah, it's t- it's testament to, to 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 Cody as well. I mean, for the team that he's built, obviously. But I don't know. There's there's just something in that that I don't think many other counties have gotten right to that level. Yeah, they, Kilkenny. I thought they looked better hurlers than Clare on the day. Anyway, you know, they just <coughs> the, the actual hurling came came true. And you know, the two you're talking about, there was two in the first half with TJ, mm. and um, he was beaten for a high ball. I think for both of them. But no one, you don't remember that because the very minute your man played, like, a lad has to take four step, he has to play. And instead of hitting the man, tackling the hurl, flicking somewhere, play the ball. Do you know, the ball, there's only one ball and, and mm. he has to release it from his hand and just the ability to flick that down, own Cody, handy point. And, you know, Kilkenny's shot selection was really good as well. So there was very few times in the game when where a lad took on a shot that you said no 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 you know that you'd often you'd be saying oh god he's not going to take this on and then you find out mm. it's a point and you go and I found that a lot even looking at Galway yesterday I thought they were taking on shots and you were and some of them went over the bar but very few Kilkenny shots I think um, uh, that they took wrongly I think the ones they, they took on were ones they should have taken on they always seem to do the right thing yeah. and play the ball to the right man and so you can talk about the wides, but I think a lot of Clare's wides as well, they were foolish, they were in bad, you know, bad p- places, bad positions. Kilkenny just probably worked it into a better position and nearly every point they took was the right option to go for a point and would have yeah. been, you know, they had very few wides, but you'd be disappointed with any of the points that would have been wides if they'd have got them. Yeah, yeah. Derek, John Conlon, um, I, th- I think that... Uh, for any individual player, I mean, it would have been a huge. It would be seismic, we'll say, to lose a Tony Kelly. Obviously, how much value would you put on the the, the loss of John Conlon in terms of somebody with that level of leadership and experience, their ability to infuse a confidence in all of the players around, particularly younger players, um, and the effects yeah, that he had on the loss of the game? It, I think it had a huge impact. Like um, you know. 
there was a huge Clare crowd up in Dublin, uh, even beforehand in the bars, and everyone, you know, there was a confidence there, probably an expectation probably going up, to be honest, uh, and obviously it didn't work out that way. But, you know, the word went around about John missing, and then definitely there was a bit of apprehension in the air, you know, uh, as to as to what they do. You know, when I was looking out at the game, Kilkenny looked so compact at the back, and they had, you know, space at the for- in, 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 in forwards with that they were able to deliver ball into space and, and you know, deliver good ball in. Whereas Clare were nearly the opposite. They looked stretched at the back. And, um, you know, uh, I think a lot of that might have come down to the fact that John was missing. Like, John has a huge amount of experience um, and obviously is a leader in the team and has settled into that role, you know, very well. All the lads around him, the wing-backs, the full-backs, the midfield, they're all used to him being there. And used to him organising it, and uh, you know, for him to come out definitely had a destabilising effect. Uh, it was a huge ask for Paddy Fitz to come into the team. Like Paddy hasn't played a minute of the championship so far, and I know he had a few injuries earlier in the year and that. So like you're going from John, who has so much experience, and then Paddy come in. It, it was a massive change for not just for that position, but for the players around him as well. And for Dave um, McInerney as well. I mean, he's 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 definitely mastered seven this year. He's played very well at seven this year, and it's a wing back is a very particular role in the setup. The Clare have been playing when yeah. all of a sudden then you have to drop back into that more of a holding role. The Conlon kind of it suits Conlon's physical makeup. Is the stage of his career that he's at that role suits him perfectly. Yeah, it does, and I like that. Davy was Davy was a loss as an attacking option from the wing. Yeah, uh, I thought Davy. You know, Davy. Had a decent game at centre back. I wouldn't say he, you know, he wasn't necessarily, you know, he was pretty good. Uh, I thought maybe his use of the ball could have been better, but uh, like that, just a destabilizing, just had a destabilizing effect for you know the position and the positions around him as well. Uh, so like that was you know a huge loss for Claire and obviously disappointing for John. <laughs> I know it's a hard one. I know it's a hard one for you, Derek, and I and I and I do appreciate it. But I do I, I do wonder about the expectation. Like if you're looking back now today on Friday and you're talking about how Clare were shooting the lights out, were closest to Limerick, were Crow Park was a kind of a home for these young fellas coming in in 13 and we you know we all thought that they were going to be um, forces for the next few years and that they do perform well in the great the wide open spaces of Crow Park and then you've got Kilkenny sitting there kind of almost I just had the sense of them reading all of that thinking this is not this is not the game of an All Ireland semi-final in Crow Park. This is not how you approach it almost with that level of expectation. Like, was there did, did it did it is there a relationship there between that expectation and the lack of a showing of a performance? Um, I don't really think so, Gizzy. I mean, like there was there was a big clear crowd there beforehand, and you know people were confident but I was chatting to a few Kilkenny lads and they were fully expecting them to win as well like so um, I don't think there wasn't a massive difference in um, approach like I, I wouldn't have said yeah. between the two teams I, like I don't think the lads were overconfident or anything like that I think they were they were confident in their ability the same way the Kilkenny lads were confident coming in too like yeah. so like from Clare point of view it's kind of hard to, uh, from the outside it's going to be hard to pinpoint exactly what went wrong but like from the quarter final and the semi final, the drop off in um, in this in performance versus the games that they played, all the games throughout that they played the Munster was huge. And um, I suppose like Clare put so much into that Munster final with Limerick, and uh, you know mentally and physically, it seems to have taken out a lot, off a lot more off the lads than what I would have expected that yeah, it had. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And the psychology of sport is amazing, like because like. It wouldn't have taken a huge change of um, uh, for for them to have gotten over the line in that monster final just by you know it, it was something they drew it at the end of normal time. So another point in the game they would have won, and then would you have had the same level of fatigue <laughs> afterwards if you're if you're coming off a win in a monster final? It's it's kind of amazing to to think about it. Really, well, you'd have that four weeks, wouldn't you? You'd have the four weeks first of all, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, like, there's probably a few, like I kind of feel like. Tony was probably carrying an eagle after that game because he didn't seem to be mo- moving as freely um, in the quarterfinal and semifinal as he was, you know, throughout the Munster campaign. So I have a feeling he might have been carrying something. And you have a chance maybe to, if you have the four weeks, you have a chance maybe to clear up things like that. But they definitely um, didn't show the same level of energy in uh, against Wexford or Arkle Kenny. And no. it didn't show anywhere near the same level of energy. And like even talking, James is talking there about the way count and that. And, 
I'd fully agree with him. Claire had a huge world count, but it's kind of it's misleading to say that it was an accuracy that was the issue. I wouldn't have said that was shot, the issue shot selection. It was shot selection, and mm. but they were forced into poor shots by, by Kilkenny as well. But part of that, then they weren't supporting the man on the ball the same way that they had been. Where you know, if you if you were in possession uh, in the Munster games in in the middle of the field, you'd have two, three short options running off your shoulder, and you'd also have the option inside. Whereas against Kilkenny, the last day. A lot of the time, they were just reduced to lumping it um, with no, you know, other than Dave Fitzgerald kind of in the middle of the field who was running off the ball and was creating overlaps. There was very little of that compared to what they had been doing. That was um, one of the surprising things about the, I think it was a, the point Adrian Mullen got maybe around 25, 30 minutes in, in uh, I think in the first half. And it came from maybe... Um, Dermot Ryan scored a point. He was up forward and nobody came back. I think he might have been picking up Mullen at the time and he got he he just got a he the puck out was hit straight to him and it was like how are Clare not working together as well as they were? Like I, why weren't Remember they working as well together? Yeah. Right, right, uh, it it seems like that's what that's what you were built on was that like the cohesion that was like we pick it up for the next fella or yeah. and that seemed to now I don't I don't buy the, the commentary of it being I think it was it was mentioned a couple of times during the match about you know, they, they retreated into individualism, like I don't think it was to that extent, but certainly something seemed to be lacking in their in their fight for each other. Uh, that hadn't been at all a, a tra- trademark of the performance to date. Like, yeah, just energy levels. Like, being, and it, it probably did. It looks as though it reduces into individualism, but lads just probably felt like they were too. Like that was an obvious case of you know a midfielder or a half forward needed to say, okay, wing backs have to come up scoring. I need to get back and cover them. Like, yeah. and there's two or three people who could have done that, but but felt obviously physically felt like they weren't able to do it or whatever the reason, but just pure fatigue and, and like that was not happening uh and uh, in, in the first five games of the year like it just wasn't happening lads were covering for each other all over um so like yeah i suppose that's when coming back to again how how much they fell off in terms of fatigue and, and energy levels from from the monster campaign it's kind of that's where they need to pinpoint okay how, how did that happen uh you know would you see brian lohan if i'm i'm i'm, I'm not sure about his contract or status or whatever but assuming that Brian Lohan is there next year can you see him changing focus if like I find it very surprising that the like the Munster final would be a stage at which and similar to Waterford I'm just wondering what's the league and the round robin style um, the condensed year is obviously very different now to what it was we'll say 10 years ago and teams are are bottoming out maybe earlier would you put less emphasis on Munster thinking that, okay, we're, we're, we're planning for September or is that just something you can't afford to do in Clare because you, you don't have that yeah. guarantee? Yeah, like that's it. Like Clare peaked, Clare peaked for the Munster final and it's it's kind of been downhill since then. And I was only saying on the way home, like, but you can't, from our point, from Clare's point of view, you can't say we're going to peak for an all Ireland semi-final or an all Ireland that's it, yeah. because yeah. you won't get there. If, in, like you have to peak in Munster in order to get out of it. Um, <clears> and... Uh, they don't, you know, they don't have that luxury uh, to be able to do that. Now, like, I haven't a clue what they've been doing and training, you know, over the last whatever month of weeks, but they'll have to look at that as well. Was there, did they change anything after Munster final? You know, did they give enough recovery time or whatever it was? You know, they'll have to examine all that. And I'm sure they will, you know, um, and, and I expect that Brian would stay on. And I, I think everyone in Clare will be hoping that he will stay on and, and try and write the rounds of, you know, the semi-final performance. But... Uh, there's definitely a lot of analysis that they'll have to do there in terms of how did that happen versus how did they end up with that performance versus the performance they had to be getting earlier in the year. Yeah. Is there, James, uh, is it a difficulty for Munster teams having to play the Munster Championship and then Kilkenny maybe can look a little bit further ahead uh, than, than Leinster uh, it's hard to say it without smiling. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to stir the pot here, Gizzy. I mean, it's <clears throat> Kilkenny. Ha- is is it just? Is it is on the back? I'm joking about that. Is it on the back of I suppose your consistency um, in that all Ireland's are part of your psyche at this stage, where you know, like you're looking at the year as a curve, and it's like well, that's where we're that's where we're coming up. And Brian Cody, because he has the experience, he has knows how that kind of works at this stage 
yeah, it's it, they, they're following a particular. You can see you, they're following a particular rhythm, and I would expect other teams to be following a similar rhythm. But they're coming up and they're and they're coming down faster. Clare and Waterford being two two of the prime examples. Um, Limerick are are, are are aren't suffering that uh, because they obviously have they, they they are planning to some degree for a, a July or what would have been a September. Um, All to, Ireland. To, to me, it's 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 different. Hurland. There's a different brand of Hurland between. Um, Munster and Leinster and you know without massively going into the debate on the whole thing um, like Kilkenny got through on scoring average into the top two in the Leinster and mm. you know you can't say that you're they're trying to judge it at that level to try and come to that and that will be okay and we knew Galway had beat was it Galway had to beat Dublin I think yeah. you know the day in Nolan Park and we were watching the the phones and we were looking like Wexford were going to beat us and there was only two or three points in it. We knew Galway were well ahead and it says, look, on score and difference, we're going to get into a Leinster final. Um, but the hurling is just different. And, you know, you look for these pop passes and Derek was saying that they weren't there for Clare. There's, our defenders, and it, it, you know, I'm not being flippant, but our defenders mark attackers. That's, we, if, if we have defenders who, if, if three of them never hit a ball out of their hand in the game, we could still win a game really well. Mm. They're not designed to be playing in this ball. We don't, we don't need the Dermot Burns will say, driving ball after ball or playing these plays in in front of of we say Galan and the boys, and it, and it's great when it works out. But our backs will only have one job to do is mark a man. And when you start marking your lad, the pressure comes on, the ball goes in not as directly, and it's every man in to look after his own. It sounds very simple, but. I suppose what typified it in the game, if you look at the goal before um, half time, Mossy Keown's goal, mm. and uh, I think it was Duggan had a shot, Richie Reid blocked him, mm. the ball ricocheted Great across back. the square. There was a couple of moments, and eventually it broke back into Richie Reid's hand again, and he launched an attack from 121 directly up to the other 21. But if you look back at the video of that, when he launched that, there was three Kilkenny boys marking three clear backs. It was three mm. on three. Mm. And I don't think any team in Munster in that scenario, if they were had a goal threat on one side and they were defending it strongly and then somebody picked up a ball and launched it, that you'd have three on three inside. And that's how we got the goal. The ball came down, Billy Ryan was falling, clipped it in front of him, uh, Mossy picked it up, yeah, batted well it down and, as well. and, and got the goal. So if you went back to a Cork, we'll say, and let's just say Clare were attacking and they launched the attack up, you could have one on three. Yeah. If you went back to a Watford, you could have won in three. And it's that different style of hurling that's kind of, you know, so if you're running around and this pop passes are coming out and there's no one tra- tracking your men, like when Galway, who had a Mannion back in the corner, they couldn't get to grips with Limerick. And when they pushed them forward in, hurlers are good enough now to play balls into lads' hands and sweepers become nearly redundant. Mm. Um, if you can put a pressure on their half-back line, stop them putting in the ball, it's just a different brand of hurling. So, we'll say the Munster and the Leinster series, you have to finish in the top three to get through. That's kind of where you need to. It's great to go win a Leinster final. It's great to go win a Munster. I think Kilkenny definitely needed that four-week break. And um, I think Conlon was a massive loss to Clare. Yeah. And not having... Because you're going from two weeks game to two weeks game, you're, you're not getting to see guys in real good training matches. So like we have a two, you know, you have a two week break now to an All Ireland. I would say maybe one training session is what you'll have of real intense where a guy can put his hand up. So you'd feel for Clare when they didn't have Conlon, you'd feel for Brian Lowe trying to put in a guy with maybe limited enough hurling behind under his belt and not having four or five training sessions to to do with it. But I think that whole. I think the brand of Hurland, the style of Hurland is completely different. And that's why I said Galway and Limerick, I felt was going to be a closer game, mm. that they'd stand up and they'd mark. Um, they'd mark one another. Do, do you see, is it, is it a bit unfair to view it as maybe uh, Limerick, Clare, Walford play a more modern style of hurling or it's a different style that has maybe come in in the last 10 years of possession and fellas off the shoulder and stuff and that's been looked on now as the way the game is played and anybody who plays it differently to that is maybe a little bit behind because they're not able to do that as well. Is there something lost there in the more traditional aspect of how maybe Kilkenny would play the game uh, that's not been factored into 
you know, which which of the provinces are, are how far ahead. It's not even which of the provinces, it's more how far ahead Munster is uh, ahead of Leinster. Yeah, maybe so. But then if you take Clare and, and or Cork, we'll say, and, and Waterford, um, do you know, you have got to go back a, a fair number of years before they've brought home the Lee McCarthy Cup. Um, you know, Limerick, I think, have a bunch of hurlers now. It doesn't matter how they play it, really, they've just got an exceptional bunch of hurlers that came into one group and mm. you could really set them up I don't mean any way but do you know it's like my mother had trained them to win an all Ireland, and it's no disrespect <laughs> to John Kiley or, or Kinnerk but they, they're she'd go a long way you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> like, that, well I'm not sure what kind of a manager your mother is like but you know Cody might be bringing her in then. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it <laughs> but you know you, you understand like, they're just a brilliant bunch of players mm. you know and you know the Galans and uh the Hayes and the Lynches and uh, all these guys are they're generational hurlers and mm. do you know it's they've got a, they're playing a great system but they're playing a great system but because they're very good hurlers and you know they've got a bench that's incredible um, but you know but I think what they both have what Kilkenny and Limerick both have more so I would say Claire on, on, on form absolutely as well but what it seems that they both have to me anyway is that no matter who the personnel in some respects I mean you've got 20 21 22 maybe on, on both panels who are, who are absolutely up there um, the standard and the style and the commitment to what Paul Canark and John Kiley have devised as a way of playing the game doesn't seem to ever change with them and it's and even though I, you slip back definitely in, in some of the games in, in, in the round robin Kilkenny have that as well it's like this is the style and you f- you play this style and this style will work um, and it's not style in the sense of of it being stylish it's a style of play that's absolutely uh, it's total and utter commitment to it and when you have that every player seems to know this is what's expected and, yeah. I, and you don't you, you can't back down from it yeah, and, and, and Limerick are possibly even more structured than the way Kilkenny play, we'll say, in, in the sense that and th- that could be a weakness, I think, for him going into a final from a Kilkenny point of view because they are going to play a team that's going to be... We know what they're going to do, really. Yeah. Whereas maybe with a Kilkenny forward line, you're not too sure where they're going to line out, who's going to play, where. There might be a few bit of changes, but with the Limerick, you know, you're pretty sure... Like, if you take... Tony Kelly Tony Kelly is a hard man to plan for because the man could be anywhere mm. and he's he's just a young lad running around the place wanting the ball but if you look at Galan and, and Flanagan and take them like you know I think it's easy to read what they'll do that doesn't mean it's easy to stop them but mm. they'll play the same type of game they'll come at pace they'll control the ball like Galan's points over his shoulder I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you can stop it but yeah. We, we, you know, we didn't know whether Tony Kelly would be. He could be in eight different positions. He could have started in any of them. So it's, it, it, it can be. It could be Limerick's downfall in the sense that I don't think they're going to bring Atten completely new to the table. I think that if we look at what the way they play and we can say this is how they do it, can we stop them? I don't know. But I don't think they'll come and after ten minutes that you'll have Cody scratching his head wondering, Jesus, what's he doing there? Yeah. You know, possibly with. Keen Lynch coming back into it and, and, and Hayes and there might be a, a switch on that side of it but the brand of Hurland they want to lay off the ball they want to do the pop pass they want to work it out from defence and you know it's it's crazy to give them the ball to such an extent that they can work it out whatever from a corner back getting it I don't mind mm. but a corner back getting it didn't play another 20 yard 30 yard pass out to a lad in the middle of the field all alone he's within striking distance perfect ball into Galan you've got to stop that you've got to get in their face mm. so but Limerick are a brilliant team. I and, and I understand it's you know, but I think any way they'd go about playing it, they'd yeah, they'd play it well. Derek, do you get the sense that the cat is out of the bag um, with Kilkenny in some respects for, for for Limerick now? Like I, I'd almost I'd like to come in on the back of maybe a one point win or maybe not as good a performance. Um, certainly not destroying the other team in our semi final because you know it looks like everything is going right and then maybe lads don't aren't aren't maybe as tuned in. I don't know, can you ever say that about Kilkenny team because they the all our semi finals and finals it's it's I I can't ever remember them not being being tuned in, but is it yeah, how how do you see I suppose Kilkenny lining up? Yeah, I, I don't think I wouldn't I wouldn't say the cat's out of the bag now, um because like like that now, Kilkenny won't have been shocked that they won that game. Like uh, I think a lot of them, you know, would have been expecting to win that game. And Limerick are going to be treating it 
the same way regardless of who they're up against you know there's an all-earned final there I don't think I don't think there's any waiting in the long grass like per se for an yeah. all-earned final you know you're just gonna have to go out and win it I think Kenny you know I probably underrated him earlier in the year I was seriously impressed with him now um at the weekend uh just in all aspects like James touching it there their hurling was far sharper the first touch striking was far sharper than the clear lads. Yeah. Um, and, and the way the structure of the team was, you know, far more compact and, and everything. So I think they're, they're going to be well set up. Um, Limerick are obviously have been the best team over the last four years, you know. Um, Clare pl- played out of their skin and, and couldn't get over the line. You know, there wasn't much in it, but they didn't get over the line. Limerick still won those games. And uh, even at the weekend against Galway, I felt like, Limerick started the game on fire, you know, the, the points that Galan was getting over his shoulder and Flanagan was getting over his shoulder, it was just it was outrageous hurling, really. But they didn't, I wouldn't say that they played at that level for the whole 70 minutes. So, you know, I think for them to get over that game, there's, they're going to be they're going to be better again in the All-Ireland final. And you, you could say Kilkenny, you know, Kilkenny could improve as well. So it's going to, it has to make it a really good game, I suppose, I, I probably at the outset of the year I would have said Limerick are the best team in the country. I still feel like they are, and yeah. uh, I still feel like you know going into that game I probably would fancy them, uh, even though you know I've underestimated Kilkenny <laughs> so far this year. So Ellie, you've gotten a few things right, like in a couple of things <laughs> wrong, I suppose. That's yeah, we're all we're all, <laughs> we're all entitled to that. Uh, were you surprised by Galway? I was, yeah, I was surprised by it. Um, yeah. I saw them against Cork and uh, I felt like Cork should have won the game by eight or nine. Mm. Um, but they just missed so many chances. And then I was thinking, you know, Limerick will be more uh, ruthless than that. But in fairness to them, they put in a savage performance um, like that. First, you know, five or six balls that went into the forward line, lovely crossfield balls that Galan and Flanagan were getting onto. And uh, you were thinking, how are the defenders going to deal with this? But in fairness to Dahi Burke and uh, I think it was the other cornerback, I can't remember his name, but uh, they attacked the next few and they cut them out and um, they didn't allow the lads to win it and, and uh, they just started really, you know, taking the game to, to Limerick and, you know, they missed some awful chances early in the game and you kind of felt, oh, you know, is that going to, is this going to be, you know, are Limerick going to kick on and win this handy enough? You know, yeah. after Galway had not capitalised on what you could, what you might have assumed was their purple patch, but no, they kept it going for the full game. And uh, you know, just I suppose again, the the power of the the Limerick bench, which has come to red in a few games now this year, uh, was was evident at the end, and they were able to kick on at the end. But I was very, you know, you'd have to give credit to Galway. Um, and uh, you'd have to give credit to Shefflin as well for the job he's done with them and to, to be able to put that forms together. I felt coming looking looking at the game, uh, I was thinking now, and I know Limerick raced in, um, like the the, the ball's going to start where were yeah, there couldn't be any more I, ideal for uh, for Galan in particular. I know Morrissey and, and Grealish kind of got, got to grips with things, and 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 as you said, Galway began to push up, and when it pushed up, yeah. actually, it suited them an awful lot more because it it knocked things off at source. The balls weren't being laid on a plate for him. You know, you can't stop a you can't stop a forward in as you well know um, at, at when balls are coming in like that. But those I felt there was something. A little bit pedestrian about Galway. That I was like, "Geez, this 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 is going to this is this is this is this is not going to go well from their way off the mark." But I felt it was a, a a bit of a weakness in Limerick actually not driving on. Um, I know Galway came into it and came into it well and pushing up certainly suited them, but they didn't in that period from fifteen minutes to maybe twenty five. I thought that there was something not firing uh, as well for Limerick, and I thought this there, there's maybe there's a reason that Clare got so close to him. There's a reason that maybe they started so poorly in the year. There's, there's a there's a there's a reason they have Kilkenny in the final, and what you were talking about last week that you might have got a bit of, a bit of hardship for that, you know, to beat a, to beat Kilkenny in, in in Ireland to do it three in a row. This leg this this question of legacy is actually. It is there, like it, it is a real thing, and 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 there's a reason that three in a rows, four in a rows, five in a rows are very very difficult to do, is because yeah. this is what you begin to fall off. I know they've been tested, I know that they've answered those tests, and it looks like they're getting stronger. But I felt in that ten or fifteen minutes there that the the team two or three years ago wouldn't have let Galway back in because I didn't think what Galway were doing was exactly. Do you know, I didn't think they were firing on all cylinders. I thought that Limerick were around the middle, weren't as hungry as they had been. 
Yeah, they're, 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 look, first of all, the few points the boys were getting inside were incredible. <coughs> the, str- the strike and the accuracy, yeah. it's just, the first touch, it was just unbelievable hurling. Um, yeah, unplayable. Unplayable and not sure anyone can do what Galan can do in that 13 position when he swings on to the left. He's just mm. such a natural flow. Like Tony Kelly is the closest to him for that ability to get the strike off. And because he got the, I was thinking, looking at it as well, because he got the goals on the inside earlier in the year, as a back, you're thinking, right, I have yeah. to, it's, it's his, his, his ability to vary over the, over the scale of the championship. Like he's not a one-trick pony where he goes over the left shoulder. Like it's, you know, you, you have to give him that little bit of respect that he can turn and burn you and go for goal as well, you know. Well, I, I was thinking that and I was looking at um, like that th- they're not getting a massive amount of goals. Um, I think they got one against Clare. They got none mm. yesterday. They're, but if you take a land, it's such a one touch and strike is done as such, you know, if you did actually go out and go all out, all he has to do if he does nip back inside you. Um, but because they're not getting the killer blows of goals, you know, it takes a lot of points. And when Galway do get the goal, all of a sudden, like they've done an awful lot of hurling there at one stage, say at the beginning, and they were 6-1 ahead. And then bit by bit, like you have to think, I know Hawkeye is there for a reason because they are, <laughs> they are wide. Yeah, but yeah. if there wasn't a the Hawkeye there, an umpire would have given a couple of points. Like Galway still done a lot of hurling. Like, you know, twice they put scores on and had to take them off. Mm-hmm. And they were still able to nudge ahead uh, running down. But I thought Galway... They retreated a bit near the end of the game. Uh, I thought they had plenty of chances, but they couldn't get that two-point gap, three-point gap. Uh, they probably needed another goal to really lift it. Um, yeah. And look, the panel that Limerick have in, what the subs they can bring on. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, they have as good in the line as what they have in the field. And that, and I, I can't believe actually they left it as late to bring them on too. I was watching the boys, would they do it? Because the game was in the balance. Mm. But it was still 55, 56, 58, up against 60 minutes uh, before they released in some of the some of the boys uh, to see it out. I think... Those, uh, those balls from from outside, for, for the inside line, lads, it's so hard to defend because, like so the first few went out to the side and Galam won them and threw them over the shoulder. And... Dahi Burke then said, "Okay, I'm going to attack the next." And in fairness, he got out for a couple, and he intercepted him. But if the lads out to the field had a half a second more to deliver the ball, and Galang goes right instead of left, he's in for a goal. You know, if you're being super aggressive, yeah. so you're relying an awful lot on your players out the field to put them under pressure. And the Galway lads were able to put them under enough pressure whereby they kind of went to their default outside outside the forward and the, and the back attacked it and, and did well then. But you know. One person out the field, just giving his man an extra second, it could result in a delivery that's a point, you know, a goal, and, and just it's so finely balanced, isn't it? They're so hard to defend. I definitely think when <clears throat> now maybe they're maybe they're doing an awful lot of work off the ball um, in trying to block up those passes because the the balls that were going in after the first maybe fifteen minutes definitely weren't as good. But Connor Cooney, Jason Flynn, I mean, I love, J- I, there's something about the potential in Jason Flynn that I love. I love his style. I love that kind of rangy kind of style that he has. And there's a, there's a, there's usually, um, or he had at least a couple of years ago, more composure in that, you know, he's controlling time a little bit more. I didn't, I, I was, I was roaring at Jeff Flynn in my head to take him off because he just didn't seem, he seemed to be just doing the wrong thing too often. I would expect definitely uh, for a victory there, like a base standard um, 80% you don't fall below if you're falling below 80% you're gone you're, you're somebody else coming in that's the that's the Limerick that's the, that's part of that style of what Limerick and that um, that Limerick and Kilkenny have you can go up and you can go down but you don't go down past 80 if you're only having an 80 just retreat back to the simple things and, and try and work your way back into the game whereas Conor Cooney Jason Flynn Concanon I know the goal was a good goal and there's a lot to be said for that direct long ball against Limerick as a bit of a shock maybe because they're used to playing it through the lines a bit more um, and Conor Whelan as well I mean there's some big like Tony Kelly and Connor Whelan being probably the two standout fellas at the weekend who who came away with their I suppose their their legacy uh, with a little bit more of a question mark on it. Yeah, and they're you know I suppose the whole Tony Kelly like we and I said it that we would we just man marked him and um, he's he's probably an easier guy to man mark than Galan and what I mean by that is that you know or even the, or even Whelan that. If you, I think, stick on Tony, he's like a young lad. You see him running around, his hand is actually going up for the ball. He's, you know, he's, give me, give me, give me. He's like this lad in the playground, just always. 
he loves having the ball. Yeah, like he loves having. Tommy was like that, wasn't he? He loves like, having the ball. Like some like, lads, you see, they're yeah. almost tense, tense in having the ball. They're doing all the things that they're supposed to be doing. But when they have the ball, they don't seem so comfortable. Whereas he just loves having the ball. And, like, and his game is built completely around running around, kind of really doing as he pleases, mm. looking for the ball and getting the ball and able to get a shot off. So, when you put a guy on Tony Kelly and man mark him, it's very hard for him to do that. And you know that's why you, I won't say it's easier to man mark him, but. You, you can just follow them around the, the field whereas if you take a Whelan and a Galan, their game is just maybe stand inside break at pace you know I don't think it's as easy maybe to get up and stop that Yeah, uh, there's more defending required shall we say Yeah, you can get a lad to go around in a night Tony Kelly for the day and it, it, it can work but you know if you're a nine Galan, I don't think it'll work because just that sheer brilliance will, will, will come out in the way he plays so there is, it, they're two completely different guys I think to try and man mark and I think yeah. you know people are saying there that uh, Mikey Butler is the man for Galan. I'm not so sure I think I'd, I'd, I'd rather see Hugh Lawler on him Yeah. Um, just he's got massive pace Hugh Lawler and I think you got to get out in front of Galan. That's the only way you can do it. There's something very, there's something very steely in the. It, it, it slowed down that the point that he got in the second half. Dahi Burke came in a little bit late and a little bit high and caught him across the hand. And I was looking, just staring at his face to see what what were the reactions because it was slowed down. He got a full like three seconds of him getting the belt and then he took it around and composed himself and got the score. And there was nothing in his face that said, "Do you know?" This is, Gil- this is Galan Galan like yeah, there was nothing was there was see, nothing yeah. that say he was just he was just still one of it was like Flanagan getting the belt in the back I suppose he just kind of well sure look at her Morrissey he was just like well yeah. look at I just got the belt and off I go like he, there was no reaction in him to say poor me in or, fact, yeah. and he could have he was in, entitled to because it was one of those ones where he'd be like yeah that's a dirt like just as a player you'd say it was a dirty belt you know if you watch him again after he got the point the camera went back <laughs> on him and he actually looks at the hand and kind of looks at the ref and he yeah. gives a do you know? Did you not see that kind of a thing? But yeah, it, w- yeah. it was brilliant. Yeah, he didn't I, flinch I one bit. I enjoy watching Galan like at the way you know a lot. Like you mentioned there, you cannot you can annoy a fella out of a game. You can annoy a forward out of a game and be at him all day long. But with Galan, it's funny like because he nearly bullies the back a lot of the time. He goes out like he'll he'll go out and he'll instigate like he'll you know he's pushing the back around before ever they get a chance to annoy him. So yeah, which is another which is another thing to consider with him isn't it you know if you have I think if you have a Tony Kelly like you're here right we're, we're here to play ball like Tony Kelly isn't going after going after you so he doesn't really have that that edginess isn't there whereas with Galan you're kind of you're worried about him going in behind for the goal or you're worried about him being yeah. out in front on his left or you're worried about him for, but you're also worried about you know he, this fella this fella could start bullying me as well like he's, he brings a huge physicality like could you could wear They're a very different player like Tony is going to be you know Tony's getting on the ball and overlaps and things like that and, and running on running and play, he's playing further out the field but you know so it's going to take a different player to mark him and I mm. agree with James I, I'd rather like from a Kilkenny perspective you'd have to put Hugh Lauder rather than Butler on him I think that would be a better call yeah yeah then what do you do with Flanagan <laughs> well, this is it this yeah. is it when you yeah. when you tie up one it seems to open the door for for, for any one of the others I suppose Kean, this the, the, that's a big question like 15 minutes he didn't really have make too much of an impact he did a couple of things you know, well as he always will, but I'd start how much though. does it? How much does it upset what's already working? Like who? Who? I suppose Graham Mulcahy definitely will will will, will struggle to nail, nail down a place for 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 the next game based on his performance. And I think you start a hurler of the year though. Mm. If he's good, you know, if he's fit enough, I think you start him. Yeah, that's my. I know it might throw the thing around a bit, but if he's a hurler of the year, let's say they don't start him. And let's say Kilkenny win the All Ireland. I think you'd have to look at it and say, okay, we introduced him at half time or just after half time. But mm. do you know, if he's good enough, he's 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 one of he's he's definitely. Well, he's certainly good enough. If, is he fit? Ah, I think he is. Yeah, Kylie said he was fit. Kylie said there was no injuries. And um, yeah, no. And look from from every from a Kilkenny point of view, I'm I'm happy we're playing Limerick, and it's not that I think we could beat Limerick uh, that easier, but just a third game against Galway and I just think that'll be a lottery again and the media will blow up the whole thing and uh, with Shefflin and Cody ah, I think so yeah, yeah. and um, that's not needed 
I, you know, I, I don't think no. so. And just, just, just purely instigated by the media. Like, you know, I'd, like I, I, just, I was actually watching Cody and Brian Lone after the game and uh, both of them were comical enough nearly. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was no handshake there and there was absolutely nothing about it. And, uh, yeah. And there was, not, there was no badness in it. Cody looked up, t- didn't see Lone coming, walked down to the field, shook hands with all the Kilkenny people, even though people would let you think that he never does that or he only done it against Galway, but shaking hands with the Kilkenny players and... Uh, Lone just stood in one position. He moseyed back over the tunnel. He gave one out glimpse out to see was Cody there. Didn't see him was on down the tunnel and no yeah, hand run. Yeah. And would either of those two guys think anything wrong of that or bad of it? Absolutely not. And yeah. I kind of like that about Lone. There's a kind of that. <laughs> I do too. Do you know, like you're. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's the thing I don't understand. Like you're playing a game and you're after losing. He's absolutely gutted. He, he doesn't want to be going mm. around there just shaking hands for a show of it. Like it's yeah. just get on with it like so it's like I think you've been good over the years with that with uh, with drinks bans in that you didn't have any there's just a, there's a level of respect that's required that you know what it is you have a moral line with it you know what your responsibility is and you yeah. have to make that decision for yourself and you're entitled if you want to, to and I'm sure plenty of fellas did over the years they stepped the wrong side of it and they didn't get a chance probably to redeem it like because it wasn't put down cast in stone and then it comes into the GA and I will have you know it came into soccer a few years ago where they, you know, they, have to, they have to line up and then some fellas wouldn't shake some fellas hands and all of a sudden now that was a big problem because they as soon as you put something in, in, in stone yeah, it's there to be broken then right? it's there to be broken yeah. and all of a sudden something's broken and everyone's like oh well, we can jump on that whereas it's like between Brian Lohan and, and Brian Cody like that's I, I'd expect two competitors like that e- but, either yeah. some to lose and be just pure tick I mean I don't know Derek from from your side of it with Brian like I don't think he went out to the media afterwards either I'm sure he just was I, I'm sure he was just furious at how at how the whole thing had, had played out like I, and I and I wouldn't see it as a weakness in him I see that's a, a strength if anything in some respects yeah I mean they're, they're both they're both average competitors you know Brian and, and the two Brian's I suppose but uh I'm sure, like, if they ran into each other, you know, in the tunnel after or whatever, they'd, they'd shake, you know. But should there be no doubt about that? Yeah, Absolutely, they would. It's just yeah. the way it goes, like. Um, but, yeah, um, you probably avoided that circus for the All-Ireland with Galway get, not getting there, but uh, it would have been fun for the rest of us to watch things. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the armchair, I think it was Enda McVoy was writing about the, the psychologists and the, I suppose, the armchair psychologists trying to read into it. But at the same time, it was there, like, it was there for us all to see and you could see Henry yeah. reacting and, and there was, like, there, it is, a, it, it is, there is something happening. Like you can't just say that you know it's o- it's overhyped or it's, it is it is overhyped because everybody has an opinion. So everything that happens is overhyped because, I mean, with you know, there's a million opinions going like flashing out straight away. Like so, there is, that, and a lot, look, a lot of people, a lot of people jumped on it and you know mm. started giving their opinions without really. And it's the one thing in sport that, you know, I suppose I often look at the, you know. Everyone is, you're so invested in it and that if the thing goes wrong or performance goes wrong, you're disappointed and you're gutted. And some people get over it very quickly. But, you know, in the moment there, I often think of, you know, the Irish soccer team and, you know, with supporters over foreign and uh, they come out and say they're the greatest Irish or the greatest supporters yeah, yeah, ever. And yeah. the game is over and they're after being beaten and they're there in the stands and they're singing for ages after. And I, can, I can't understand it mm. in the sense that I'm picturing being in an Ireland Ireland and being bet by, we say, Tipperary and there's some lad beside you singing the Rose of Munkine. Yeah. Do you know, at the final <laughs> whistle. You, yeah. <laughs> you know, you turn around and you, you say, oh my God, like, how can you? You yeah. walk out and discuss it. Like, it's a different type of, of scenario. Yeah. And uh, Well, well, well where, I th- where I think, and I think this is across the GA actually, uh, and it's come in in the last 20, 25 years, maybe as... The GA has changed in class as, I don't know, there's been an expanse in the middle class or whatever way it is, but sometimes it feels like there are values uh, that were that are being put in by uh, in boardrooms and people who are wearing fine suits saying this is how we should act. This is how we should behave in this situation. And when I think of Brian Lohan and when I think of Brian Cody, I'm like, well, I don't I, I don't care how you expect him to act. I, I, I don't I don't feel like like a sportsman who is ref, like he has this inbuilt refusal to be beaten, which is what Brian Cody has, has shown. Brian Lohan played the game that way. And that's what, why he was lauded and feated. And, and that's how he, he, he played the game, though he did. And now all of a sudden we have these like soft kind of value systems put in and say, well, no, this is how you have to react in this situation. And when you don't do it, 
you're like, well, well what kind of a man is Brian Cody when he because he didn't? I like, well, I should I tell you what kind of a man? He's a competitor and he and he's hurting, <laughs> and that's the way it is, you know. So I, it, it's N- nobody should ever ask the question again. What's Brain Cody like? You know, <laughs> Does, yeah. you often get that question. Sure, you can see yourself. He's that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what more do you <laughs> what want? More to know? do you want? Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. If you can't make it out, move, you know. You should, you, you, it's so I don't know it's, it's it's a silly scenario that has come into it that that people have to perform in a certain way yeah it, it, it shouldn't have to be the case and like it just showed the only thing that matter in that semi-final Saturday and Sunday was actually winning the game yeah. for all teams involved and everything else do you know the rehearsals the warm-ups the you know come to Northern Ireland meet the president all those other things around it they're all just have to be done but However they're done, the performance in the game and winning the game is absolutely tops yeah. everything off. And everything else is just a smiley, a tiny little percentage. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 won, I wonder sometimes about that. I don't, I, it doesn't seem like or I don't remember it ever being discussed. I don't know, the GPA never was never a thing or, or amongst players that straight after a game, you've got this microphone is in front of the player of the match or, or the man of the match or whoever it is. And now all of a sudden that's boomed out in front of 80,000 people there. And they're now speaking yeah. on a microphone to 80,000 people. And you're just coming out of this experience of the body, like you're totally out of your mind in your body. And then there's this microphone. It was, it was one thing when you were just being interviewed by somebody as, as, you know, as we are now, and it's like a one-on-one conversation. But now you hear your you're out in front of 80,000 and I'm, I'm sure it's a nice experience because you've gotten man of the match you've probably won the other one but I, sometimes I yeah I just don't know I don't know how that became acceptable kind of all of a sudden you know it's it's like a manager being asked straight after the game like are you going to retire or stay till next mm. year like such a time like imagine asking loan <laughs> <You know? laughs> anybody ask that, that question Derek <laughs> uh, Devlin Clare I'd say I, I suppose it would, they would all would have been asking. I hope you're staying on anyway. If the question was asked, like it's, I think it's an overwhelming. It's kind of, I'd say it's kind of understood that he's there. You know, I don't think there's any talk of anything else. Like, yeah, so, uh, it's it's, it's on. It's in hope more than it's in hope that he would. Yeah. yeah, I know. I don't. I'd say no one will be asking because everyone knows he's going to be there again. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, and, uh, I want to just give uh, de- definitely um, a couple of minutes to what seemed like a, a bit of a carnival atmosphere in um, Nolan Park uh, at the weekend. Awfully, I don't know, like there's something, I maybe, do I, I don't know, I don't think that I imagine it. I put them in, I, I suppose I can empathise with them as a, as, as a Wexford, as a Wexford man, like yeah. you, you want... You want to feel like you're part of something um, that that like that's heading in the right direction, and that you have the some form of respect from you know the the, the game of hurling itself. Like that's a a kind of a bottom line in your involvement, and after you've slipped below that line in the last few years, and there seems to be I I don't know that a pile a lot of expectation, and like I couldn't believe the difference. Uh, just looking at the, the All Ireland final and minors in your head, and you have an idea of the minors, and then all of a sudden you remember, okay, these are seventeen, these are sixteen, yeah. seventeen, they're young fellas. I don't know how much this they responded very well to the pressure, um, but f- oh my God, what a heartbreak! It's oh, as heartbreaking as heartbreaking could be. Mm. Twenty seven in there and uh, they nearly saw it out they should have seen it out um, the free at the end was like it was just a perfect weighted free and uh, it's one of those moments in time that you'll you'll, you'll, you'll go back over the, the, the awfully prayers will go back over it. if we'd have gone harder if I'd have jumped higher if I'd have pulled if I'd have hit if I'd have mm. you'd have so many different things and, um, and and I was thinking even before that goal went in looking back I was saying it to someone last week that I think a lot of games finish now a lot, very close and a lot of games have finished in recent years and I don't know is it that more of them are uh, I suppose between TG Cahar and more of them are being televised I think the Covid brought a lot of them in in club games mm. but the amount of games that actually end with a late goal or a late score in the last few years there's so many of them and I think maybe it was always the case only you know we were only seeing some of the bigger games ourselves but uh Absolutely heartbreaking to be, you know, I think there were six up, five up to come back. Oh, sure, I mean, it looked like they couldn't just, lose it. No. Like six points up, man down. Did you see it, Derek? It was an incredible finish. Uh, an incredible finish. Like, yeah. Um, it, it, it was, uh, there was a great picture on the TV. Um, all the Offaly crowd behind the goal with their hand, with their heads in their hands and all the tip crowd behind them, you know, 
going ballistic and just incredible you know moment really and obviously heartbreaking for awfully and you'd have to feel from like and but like look they're they're they've got green shoots there you know that could stand to a lot of the players they could say you know they could take the view look we were this close and we have to drive on and get that bit better to win it um so uh, just an amazing game an amazing moment and, yeah uh, yeah to take. You have to, i actually I really respected the ingenuity of the way they approached the free, like because so many lads would drill it, and you know there'd be too many bodies in the way to drill it, and the way he just put a perfect yeah. laugh on it. And, on how uh, many times we playing on a fella lob that onto the fourteen, or do you know you'd be bra- like you'd be just it's not easy done. It's not easy done to get it just 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 coming down on the six yard line, like right there, like it's it's a perfect free, like and they set up well for it in the movement towards the ball as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it was class. There's so many times that you get nothing out of those frees at all. So, like, fair play to the lad who took it and for the lad who followed in. It just, it just gave a real 50 50 chance where the chance was kind of a one in 20 before that, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, all, it's all about Offley's response to it anyway. I mean, that's, you know, the green shoots are there with any loss. It's just, it's, it's, the, the loss isn't the problem. It's your I response tips, to the loss is what the problem is. name was nearly on that trophy, just the way the whole year went. It had so many comebacks, penalties, extra times, late scores. Yeah, it was just yeah, the right yeah. was on the wall. So, um, yeah. It was a great minor championship, actually, like, yeah. uh, even from Clare's point of view. They played eight games this year, like which is huge for that age group to get that mm. exposure. Like and awfully, hopefully, awfully will kick on and and uh, you know, I think you know those players could say to themselves, "Look, it was heartbreaking, but there's a massive opportunity here for us to achieve something new in the next few years." So like, hopefully, they will and they'll take it on and improve. Yeah, there's been a few false starts, but it looks like things are heading in the right direction, which is good. I'd be happy for them for it. Um, Kieran Kingston is gone from Cork. Uh, before we finish up, uh, we are surprised. Is it? Is he taking him where he's can take him and time yeah, to move I, on? Or I was only watching the Sunday game last night and I was looking at Cusick there and Davy and they were they were slagging about you know which one of them could take it on. But you know I think traditionally I suppose the Cork replacement has nearly always come from within. I'd say yeah. Um, but uh, I think you know look I think he's done well, but. Has he done well either? I suppose if you're getting re- you know a Cork Cork demand a lot, but you know it's been what oh five I'd say since Cork last won uh, in All Ireland, um, and uh, we were waiting in the long grass in 06, according to John Logue last night. I don't know if you see it, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. the you know it's 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 a tough enough <laughs> job. It's a massive county um, just to try and bring it all together, but. Uh, I think they'd have a look at their style of their hurling and I think they were getting it a little bit better as the year uh, you know went on this year um, but uh, you know I there seemed to be something wrong in, in the, at, the, at the heart uh, I don't know there seemed to be like I know they came good but to me like every day every day we were kind of analysing Cork we were like there's something there's something not gelling there's something at, in, in, in the, at the core of it and I'm not I don't think for a second that it's Kieran Kingston is the problem at the core of it but it is yeah. the manager's responsible, responsibility to find out well, okay well what's the, the core thing as opposed to the, any of the stuff around the edges like the core thing is 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 the thing you you have to resolve in some respects and then let everything outside of that kind of filter out from the centre and it never seemed to me anyway I don't know it never seemed to kind of resolve talk, like they talk about splitting Dublin in the football we say split it in half when they were having early you to talk about ultra, yeah. ultra, ultra, <laughs> ultra dominance and uh, it could nearly favour Cork if they actually split it into three or four quarters because or into four quarters um, you know it's just to try and there's so many hurlers there's so many clubs mm. they should be able to pull together a serious team and uh I mean, they do have a, like they they they've 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 a good team. Like they do have good hurlers there. It's just oh, there's, there's incredible there's incredible hurlers, but they're not getting. I don't think they're getting the right mix. Yeah, and, uh, and as regards for, for Kingston, I think with the uh, young lad being on it, Shane, I think it makes life easier for him definitely. Uh, I think so because Shane's a fabulous hurler, and I think yeah. even for himself and just let him matter because if he plays it, lads are wondering. Then they don't. He doesn't play him. Then he brings him on a sub, and he's awesome when he's brought on a sub at times. And yeah, it's a. Uh, no. That, that relationship is always in the in the background. Derek, do you see who do you see coming in instead of him? Or I, was, I wasn't overly surprised that Kings to finish up because you know it kind of earlier in the season anyway it looked like he had the weight of the world in him after a few games and yeah like that you know even for Shane it'll be easier for him not to see you know the stress maybe that the job is putting on his father and stuff so um, you know I think he's you know he can be proud of the job he did as well they have a good team but I would probably favour someone coming in from the outside there you know oh bye uh, controversial yeah, for yeah, Cork think, anyway yeah I know but I just feel like um, 
they could be maybe a bit more ruthless uh, coming in from the outside and maybe hold lads a bit more accountable. Uh, Who are you thinking, Liam Sheedy? Liam Sheedy would be good. Yeah, Liam Sheedy would be good. Anthony David Fitz? Be good. Uh, maybe uh, dear, uh, James's mother might want to take on. <laughs> <laughs> she said uh, her CB down. We'll be waiting, uh, a, lo- we'll yeah, waiting a long time for an hour later. We might get we might get her in next week for the for the preview of the uh, of of the final. But that's it. That's look at there's uh, there's loads there, lads, and there's loads to look forward to as well. We've got two weeks now to stew over what's going to happen. Kilkenny uh, in the long grass, firmly out of the long grass now. If they were ever in it, you're certainly not. Not uh, you don't feel that they were ever really in it, and no. you definitely didn't feel they were in it. No six either. Uh, I'm guessing. <laughs> So um, yeah, they, they, stuff with you anyway, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was, I was. I remember, I was going to say, I remember the long grass myself, but I was thinking that if it was shorter that day, we might have kicked on by more. But uh, it was shorter in 08 and 09 when we came up again, one another anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Okay, look at that's a uh, that's enough, lads. Uh, Derek, I know it's fair play for coming in today. I know after. Uh, a performance like that um, and I'm sure you had a couple of points with the lads Saturday night um, thanks for, for, for coming in and for joining us and trying to dissect what, what what's, what's going on in Clare what you have to look forward to and the rest of the championship as well and James to yourself um, yeah thanks as always no and you've got uh, you have a big big two weeks ahead um, that's it we'll be back next Monday to look ahead to the all Ireland final we're down to two Limerick Kilkenny uh, James was raising the question is there something in the legacy of Limerick Domination that they have to beat Kilkenny and at three in a row to uh, yeah to make sure of that uh, legacy. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. Thanks very much for joining us, and we'll catch you next week. Mm-hmm.